So how do I have a healthy relationship with people in my life and have a, a positive thing going in my marriage, in my relationship with my kids? Uh, how do I get healthy, deep friendships? Uh, how do I get things moving in the right direction in my relationship with my employer, with my neighbors? Uh, how do I find more new, uh, better friendships? How do I find uh, a spouse? How do I land in those places? And how do I effectively impact the lives of others, particularly when it comes to evangelism? Believe it or not, all those things are wrapped into common, some common principles that we're going to walk through today. And these principles are coming from the message that I preached on Sunday, January the 23rd, 2024. They, the uh, entire message will be on our YouTube channel as well as on our, our Facebook page. Just look up the, the recording of that date and you'll find the entire message which I'll refer to all the, the passages and quotations in, in scripture. But here I'm just going to give you a basic outline. So how do I have health in all those relationship areas and those arenas of life and how do I have a positive impact on the people in my life, especially towards evangelism, discipleship. The way to get there is, is by knowing how to connect with people. The key is the way we're connecting with the people that are in our lives. It's what's going to, again, enable me to lead someone to Christ and make a disciple out of them, let alone all the other earthly benefits that, that can come by knowing these skills of connecting with others. And this is coming from, from the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, we see that, that numerous times, thousands of believers at once, people were being added day after day after day after day, people were being a part, becoming a part of this, this church. And how were they able to yield such influence? There's a lot of factors to, to it. Of course, obviously, the enabling power of the Holy Spirit is one of them. There are a lot of things that sit there. But one of the things that, is, that sits there as to why they were capable of doing this is the way that they connected with people. And we can derive some principles to the way they did that that could, again, help with all those areas that I had, I had mentioned. So how do we connect with people? It starts first with having good character. I need to be the certain kind of people, especially when I'm with others, in order to encourage this connection to take place. So before I even start doing stuff, I need to be the, the kind of person that can connect well and relate well with others. One of those traits is to be agreeable. Uh, the more I dis it's not that I can never disagree with one, someone, but the ratio from agreement to disagreement is very, very key. If, if I am, even if I'm disagreeing 40% of the time, that's a very large amount of time. So it, it, it's not even ideal to get to a 50-50 split. It should be, and I can't throw out an exact number, but it should be high. It should be maybe 80, 90% 80, agreeable, 20 to 10 percent, maybe even a larger number, but it should be a high number that agreeable versus disagreeable. And I'm going to be able to influence people based on that. So if I'm trying to influence people's lives and have healthy relationships, I need to look for being agreeable. I also need to be respectable because people are going to have a hard time following my lead and, and interacting with me well if they don't respect me as a person. So I need to learn how to carry myself in a respectable way. So that's the first step in this is to have good character. And when I don't have that, often relationships tend to unravel as, as well as my ability to evangelize and a lot of different things. Secondly, I need to be proactive. I need to be pursuing people. Uh, so many times people will say, hey, you, you haven't called me in a long time. I, I don't know why you've stopped calling me. And what they mean is you should have been the person who, have been, who was proactive. I should just be able to sit back and wait for the relationship to come to me. And that's not how it works. If I truly want someone to be in relationship with me, I need to be proactively pursuing them. And I could do that a few different ways. One, by being present. I need to actually be around the people to be in relationship with them and to connect with them. Secondly, is to show concern. I actually need to care about them, care about their well-being, and care about the things that they're going through. I also need to look for shared interests. So many times the way we connect with people is if we have something in common. 
uh, that we could do together that we both like. And so I need to be looking for that in my relationships. These are ways that I'm going to connect. This is the difference between the person who is around people but doesn't seem to be getting the relational traction they're hoping for, doesn't seem to be influencing people for Christ the way they hoped for, is, is because they didn't go beyond just being present. You have to start there, but, but we need to move beyond that and learn how to connect with people by showing concern, sharing interest. Uh, also, we can do this by meeting needs, uh, whether it's financially helping out, but sometimes we don't have the resources for that. We always have resources, whether it's to be an encourager, whether it's to be there to show support, whether it's to serve and do something for them, whether it's to simply pray for them. There's always a way, whether it's to point them to resources, there's always a way that we can be helpful. And the more helpful we are, the more we're going to establish a connection that can yield some positive results. Also, I need to get outside of the church, especially this is uh, specifically to evangelism. If I'm going to lead people to Christ, I have to be interacting with people who don't know Christ. If I'm going to lead people to be a part of the body of Christ, the church, I need to be interacting with people that are not a part of the body of Christ, the church. And so I have to get outside of the church in order for this to, to take place. And all those behaviors we see happening in the book of Acts. So I need to... I need to have good character, I need to be proactive, and then lastly, I need to respect limitations. One, I'm limited, you're limited. There's only so much time you have, there's only so many resources, only so many abilities and so much energy that you have. And you need to realize that it is okay to say no, but as long as you're still fulfilling the mission. So I can't say, well, I need to take care of my family right now, and I need to take care of my work, I need to take care of my health, and so I'm not going to be involved in advancing the mission. Now, there's one thing that you go on vacation for a week or, you know, you have, like, surgery recovery time and those kind of things, but it shouldn't be chronic. It shouldn't be long periods of time that I'm not fulfilling the mission that God has called me to. Uh, but at the same token, I can't do all of it. I can't do everything. And so there are times that I have to say no to this good thing in order for me to take care of this other good thing. Uh, and so I'm going to need to learn to, to say no enough to mission so that I can appropriately take care of my family and my job and my home and my, my welfare. But I need to say no to these things enough to be able to appropriately take care of being faithful to the mission. And so I need to learn that I'm limited and I need to set up some boundaries and point them in the right direction, though. I also need to know that if I'm limited, that means everybody else is also. And so I cannot put, and people do this often, I cannot put all of my needs put, put on one individual. Even a wife or a husband, I cannot just expect that this husband, this wife is going to fulfill every single one of my needs. They can't. They're limited. And if I approach relationships as if they do not have any limitations, then it's going to be fractured. It's not going to go well. I'm going to, pull, I'm going to quit. Uh, it's going to fall apart. I have to respect that the people in my life, pastors, churches, even groups, and organizations are limited. They can only do so much. And I have to be okay with that. I have to respect that there's limitations. I also have to respect the limitations of Scripture. That as I'm attempting to build connections, build relationships, and advance the mission of reaching people, I cannot cross clear biblical lines. It's one thing, you know, you got some gray areas, things that are disputable in Scripture. Uh, it's another thing with personal convictions thing, things, but when it comes to clear biblical principles, I should never violate those for the sake of a relationship, for the sake of the opportunity to reach someone. Uh, it's highly important to reach people, and relationships are highly important. They can't come ahead of me being submissive to the will of God as clearly revealed in the Word of God. If I put these practices in place, then, then I am likely going to have multiple effects. I'm going to start connecting with more and more people, and I'm going to, through that, gain the opportunity and the ability to lead people to Christ, to influence them to come and be a part of the body of Christ, the church, 
and I'm, I'm likely to have a, a healthier marriage or even to enter into a marriage if I'm not already married, uh, to find healthy, strong family relationships, friendships, and I'm going to have the benefit of, of better working conditions and, and, and better jobs and things like that. All these are related to social skills that go all the way to evangelism, all the way down to all of these earthly matters. So uh, if you have any questions on that or if you have any feedback on to your thoughts on the content of this video, I'd love to hear it. Leave them in the comments. Uh, and uh, if you live in the Pittsburgh area and you would like to grow in your faith in person, we would love for you to join us at Bethel Assembly of God. 2501 State and Street, Wednesdays at 6.30 and Sundays at 10 a.m. God bless.